Welcome to Power Podcast, episode 74.63. Power Podcast is an audio supplement for Public Administration Review, the premier professional journal in the field of public administration. In 2015, Power will celebrate 75 years of furthering public administration research, theory, and practice. This episode features comments by Richard F. Callahan, Associate Professor of Public and Nonprofit Administration at the University of San Francisco and Mark Pisano, Professor of the Practice of Public Administration at the Price School of Public Policy at the University of Southern California. Professors Callahan and Pisano discussed their article, co-authored with Xu Yang Tang, also at the Price School of Public Policy, titled, Using Common Pool Resource Principles to Design Local Government Fiscal Sustainability. This article is currently available on Early View, and we print it in Public Administration Review, Issue 74, Volume 6. Professors Callahan and Pisano analyzed local government fiscal sustainability as a common pool resource problem and compared the experiences of Los Angeles County, San Bernardino City, and San Bernardino County, California as case studies. Welcome. For the start of this, we'll consider uh, what is the issue or what is the problem that this addresses, this article, and Mark Pisano will get us started with that discussion. The issue of fiscal stress uh, came upon us during the Great Recession, uh, and we began looking at case studies as to how cities, counties, and special districts were were responding to this stress. Uh, We also looked at the issue of, is this stress simply a cyclical issue? That is uh, an issue brought on by the Great Recession and it's going to fluctuate with the, with, uh, the business cycle, or is this fundamentally a long-term issue that will be accentuated during the business cycle. And what we found was that even though we're now in almost the end of the sixth year of recovery uh, and things look better, uh, that when you look long-term at the issue, namely what are the long-term structural issues such as demographics uh, and issues such as um, uh, deferred maintenance, uh, longer-term issues such as pensions and health care, uh, that you find long-term stress on the expenditure side of the equation. We also looked at the economic aspects, namely, uh, will the same demographic of, uh, forces have an influence on economic growth, on the growth of income, on the uh, growth of taxes paid? And what we found um, is that the same demographic forces kick in, but in the opposite way, that there will be longer-term declines in income and substantial declines in the growth of taxes paid. In fact, over the next three decades, as much as 48 to 49 percent reduction in the growth of taxes paid. Therefore, the the observation that our team came to is that the the, um, forces and the patterns and the trends that we were identifying in the case studies um, would be needed to be uh, heated over the long term to deal with these uh, both uh, cyclical as well as long term issues. In looking at the at, at the longer term, uh, and we found that <clears throat> that uh, there are are forces that are difficult to be coped with in the democratic process. Not unlike what I found in reporting to a board of 70, over 70 elected officials for over 32 years, the difficulty of bringing long-term understanding on issues such as how do we provide for services if there isn't the revenues? How do we uh, deal with the the deferred maintenance and the investments uh, if there aren't adequate resources? Um, What we proposed was uh, and this was brought forward by Yang Tang, who had done uh, long-term research, that the issue of common pool resources uh, and the principles uh, that he had uh, been following in his research of Eleanor Ostrom might be such a vehicle. <clears throat> um, and the interesting fact was the more we did case studies and the more we identified uh, the behavior of how you deal with the common pool resource issue of general fund budgets, uh, the more what we are finding reinforced the same principles that we found in physical systems, such as fisheries, forests, 
Um, and, and those elements that are pretty common out here on the West Coast <clears throat> and that our elected officials could, re, could identify with. Uh, to further amplify on these uh, results um, and how the principles that Ostrom identified um, and how they reinforce what we were finding uh, will be explained by Rich Callahan. So as we looked at this issue, we really answered the question of who cares about this in two different ways. One from the standpoint of practitioners in local government, state, and county government. And as Mark indicated, these stresses will continue well into the future and make it difficult to address citizen needs and expectations in services, infrastructure, and with changing demographics. The second group that we thought would care deeply about this are researchers and the academic community in applying a new framework, and that is our solution to, to the issue that Mark has identified is to apply this framework developed by Eleanor Ostrom and to look at the micro situational variables, communication with the participants, <laughs> reputation of the participants, high marginal per capita return, entry or exit capabilities, longer term time horizons, and agreed upon sanction capabilities to apply these micro situational variables to the question of fiscal resources. And what we found, what this allowed us to do was to come to a deeper understanding of predictable patterns, to anticipate tensions, and to examine mechanisms in the common pool resource context that can create cooperation in the fiscal context for breaking through gridlock. Um, we, applied, we looked at three specific case studies, the County of Los Angeles, San Bernardino City, and San Bernardino County to apply this analysis. And so it gave us an opportunity in crosswalking this analysis from uh, environmental resources to fiscal resources to develop a set of insights and actionable steps forward for both practitioners and for those researching these problems. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mark for any final comments that he has to finish us up. It's very difficult uh, when elected officials are continually going through, un under our term limit uh, environment in California, a change, uh, when issues that are going to be well beyond um, their term of office uh, are going to come to pass. It's difficult uh, for them and for the citizens to understand the kinds of, of over-extraction impacts that can happen if one group takes more out of the common pool than they're putting in or hurts the, the uh, benef benefits of others. So it was that, that visualization and the capacity to understand fiscal issues in real terms that we found was the power of this work. And to finish up, what we really uh, hope to accomplish in this is to uh, invite you to uh, read the article coming up in uh, Volume 74, Issue 6 of Public Administration Review for the November-December issue and to see how we've applied this framework that really tries to encourage stakeholders to look beyond their immediate self-interest and make decisions that address the long-term interests of the community. And the framework developed by Eleanor Ostrom and which she was recognized with the, Nobel, with the award of the Nobel Prize um, gives, you, gives us a chance to take that framework and see how to get to long-term consideration and how to break through uh, short-term um, frustration and difficulty. This concludes PAR Podcast Episode 74.63. To listen to additional episodes and learn more about Public Administration Review, please visit us online at publicadministrationreview.org. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at PA Review. Thanks for listening.